Now then, well, quick one out tonight. I've just uh, set off about five o'clock. I've got probably an hour to get set up. Um, walking poles on the back there. I've not really used walking poles much to walk with, but they do work well with my uh, DD Hammocks tarp tent. So I'll take them out when I'm using that. So. It's been an absolutely glorious day today, glorious. And I've done a, um, I've been out with the G for a, a 28 kilometer run, um, which has tired my legs out. But I'll, uh, I'll explain a bit more about that later, because uh, yeah, my missus is an absolute machine, total machine. She's done a challenge and yep, yeah, total respect to her. So yeah, I've got a, a place that I'm just going to hide out tonight. Um, it's only about maybe a kilometre from home, but you know, as you can see, I get to walk through all these beautiful woods to get there. Yeah, these woods used to be used back in the 80s, I think, by a guy called uh, Eddie McGee, which most people, if you're in the bushcraft game, you probably know the name. Pretty sure you'll know his son, Perry McGee, who's uh, he's always at the bushcraft show and proper nice fella, really really nice. But yeah, they used to use this for uh, training. Um, I think it would be it might be an SAS training or something like that. You know, something cool. But when I was a kid, they used to come up and find like all these little cool shelters that have been made, little lean-tos against rocks and little cubby holes where they just uh, you know camped under some of the rocks so yeah it's a pretty cool place and I'm lucky enough because I get to but yeah it's been my playground all my life I've been able to come up here and utilize these woods for a bit of wild camping um, Hammock camping is always ace up here because there's a million trees and you know I brought my kids up, lit hundreds of fires. My dad used to bring me up here, I brought my kids up here. So yeah I just feel very lucky that it's just on my doorstep really. It's, it's honestly ace, it is ace. Anyway, this is my little camp spot that I decided I had a scrat around the other day to try clear it off because um, the views are pretty cool from here um, and it's a bit of a bracken sort of a leveled off pad here so I cleared you can see I've scratted around there just on that bit but that's a nice sort of flat section just a with a view in the morning let me see if I can focus out on that there we go sun's going down get a bit of colour in the sky I'll miss it here though because we are definitely uh, north on the north face here. Anyway, right, I'm going to uh, have a go again, set up camp. Exciting, eh? Always good coming for a night out, everybody loves it. Absolutely loves it. It feels so amazing after doing it, so get yourselves outside. Here we go. This is what we're starting with DD Super Light Tarp Tent. So it's pretty cool, is this? Tiny, not much to it at all.
it doesn't take so long that really does it it's a fairly quick one to do um, and it looks pretty cool to be fair just sat there on that top of that hill so yeah I'm quite happy with that so this is the DD super light tarp tent from DD hammocks if you're a bushcrafter you'll understand DD everybody has the uh, DD frontline hammock I would say if you're into bushcraft um, and this just uh, being a tarp tent it's uh, it's pretty good for what it is and it's not super expensive I think to be honest I think about 130 quid but for a tent for 130 quid it's not bad especially this weight it only weighs um, 750 grams or something um, obviously that's without the two trekking poles because you do have to take your own trekking poles and if you use poles most of the time anyway then fantastic backpacking tent uh, it's only single skin that's totally fine if you you know you're out and about in fairly decent weather um, but obviously you'll get a bit of condensation with that but anyway so but yeah quick wander around got that guy line at this end holding it up off your feet and then um, a couple of guys just to sort of pull it up and give you a bit more space inside um, and then there's two guys here which are for just a couple of air vents just at this end right time to get my kit inside A couple little toggles there, easy enough to do. My only issue with this tent though, this, I can't find a way of pinning this back up so it's wafting about all the time. So you can sort of tuck it in over this, but I need to adapt that and maybe stick something, sew a, a tab on or something. Then the rest near where this is pretty comfy so I quite enjoy this one. Fuck, annoying. But once you've got a mat in, it goes oh it's pretty dark. Right up to that end. And you've still got Space at the back and a bit of space at the end to put your bag. I think I'll put that on, it's just getting a bit chilly now. My fall ribbon jacket, perfect for any bushcraft at all this. Got a decent pocket at the front here, absolutely love that because you took pile all the sorts in there. And a through pocket here which you can zip up and um keep your hands warm inside but what I've done is I've sewn this up and I've made myself a little um, rabbit skin look at that just slot your hands in there and then you can hold your hands together absolutely perfect and that just fits in this pocket perfectly so there we go that's what I'm looking for I'll get my mat out so then I can kneel down I've got my Thermarest Adara HD winter down quilt. And this is a women's long. I've mentioned it before, but it's um, it does the trick for me. It's absolutely perfect. Give it a bit of a shake. Get some of that down lofting. Oh. On my next job, I'm going to um, nip off and just get some dead wood just to burn because I've got my little stove here which is get off me dog <laughs> hold on let's have a look at this yeah my biolite stove so rather than lighting a fire and drawing attention to myself I'm just going to use this bad boy So light a little fire in that and cook on it. It's absolutely awesome. But I'll talk about this in a minute because it's uh, it's better than what you think. 
if you've not seen one before. Right, time for a quick wonder then. Oh yeah, just to mention about this jacket as well. For bushcrafting, this is why I think it's best jacket. To get it on and off, you can um, unzip these two sides just to help you get it on and off because obviously it's going over your head every time. But if you're bushcrafting, you've got your knife and saw, axe, whatever, you can just undo that and it's all accessible. And if you want to get them hidden away, there you go. Right then, it's time to get my fire going. So, I'm going to use this. My bio light, a little burner. Perfect little cooking uh, top on it as well. Um, and also, this orange battery thing here, I'll show you in a bit, but once you get a bit of heat going, it starts uh, generating electricity. So if you've not seen one of these before, they're pretty cool. They're quite expensive. I don't know what they're like nowadays. I've had this a few years, but... Um, but yeah, it's got like a little USB port. So that USB port there allows you to... Uh, plug in phone or whatever get your phone charged up or even a lamp or anything you want so anyway I'll uh, let me get on with this and I'll show you how it works first of all let's get my knife out this is a knife I made myself one of my first ones so it's pretty cool it looks a bit battered like but uh, anyway I'm gonna use the magic of a tampon so if we just get a section of that cut off you don't need to use it all because it's just cotton wool but just in touch with my feminine side and all that but yeah a tiny bit of that you just fluff that up it's great for starting your, your fire uh, it's just cotton wool obviously but it's um it's already compact so it's, you know reduces your pack size and all that and what I always do I'll just uh, stick on a bit of Vaseline as well just so it burns a lot longer when you're trying to get your fire going you can soak um, cotton wool in Vaseline like melt the Vaseline into it and it does burn for a long time but this is a good way of just getting uh, getting your fire going my tampon on there, we'll just try to get that lit first job with. Oh, there we go. I was using the wrong side. So, straight away, drop her in. And I'm just going to feed some tiny, tiny little bits on to get it started. So, we turn that button on there, and it causes a. See, it's smoke coming out at the top now. It's got a fan. So it whirls it round and draws the air in perfectly to get your fire going. There she is. Oh, she's going. She's uh, she does all right, really. Let's see if you can see into it. But yeah, that fan it just uh, keeps drawing air constantly and just turns it into a pretty good cooking flame. What you can do, just turn it off one. So you've got a little bit of control over the temperature of it and obviously you can turn it off. So, getting a bit chilly now. Got this little uh, fire going though, it's quite nice for warming my hands up. But I am going to cook some dinner. I've got, I've only got a titanium plate. It's like a tiny, tiny little thing. But hopefully we can um, get everything in pan for with that. Got some uh, pot grip grippers as well, so I can use that. I'll pop that on there. I think we're pretty flat. So tonight we have some. These are like bacon, like off cuts. Which is pretty cool because uh, they're quite cheap actually and they're just great for chucking in a pan like this. So we'll shove some of that in. My knife, I made this knife. There's actually quite a lot here. Tell you what, I'll cook it all. And then once it's cooked, 
I can give dog some anyway. Uh, tell you what, let me just quickly make myself some sort of. <laughs> it's just a little crap stick I've got next to me. Ah, oh dear. And I'm going to make myself uh, something to use in the pan just to stir things around. If you've ever done bushcraft before, don't ever copy that. It's not bad though, is it? That'll do. Look. You can hear pot grip, so. Just hold on to that to keep it um, from falling off. Well, there's a lot of bacon in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get the meat sweats later, I think. Quite nice little setting up here. I can just see the lights of the village down in the bottom. And, oh my god, I can see a red moon. You never see that. Wait a minute. Look at this. An actual red moon. I wonder if I'll be able to do some sort of a uh, time lapse on it later on. It's only just coming up over the horizon now. Awesome. So, yeah, we're struggling with it really because uh, the battery, I've not used it for a while and then the battery went flat. And it needs heat to generate the, um... <laughs> I'm crying. It needs heat to generate the uh, battery and get it back to something like. And, um... Anyway, I just ended up just tipping out the contents of it and I've just made a tiny little fire and all I'm going to do is just get that um, bacon cooking on there and my mushrooms in in a minute. It's taken some uh, work to get this fire going really because uh, everything's so damp. Sizzling away though that, looking beautiful. <laughs> the magic stirrer. Look at that. Look at that. Ray Mears would be jealous of my skills. Cooking away beautifully. Look at that. Keep looking. It's really exciting. And I think that'll do. Well, I'll be honest, <laughs> that was a nightmare just trying to get dinner cooked. Just with all this damp wood, after all this rain and snow we've had. Um, yeah, that, that was that was hard work. It really was. But I've got, I have, look at that, my cooked dinner. Bacon, mushrooms and green beans. So... Got me, uh, my titanium spark, and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna enjoy this and just try to keep this little tiny fire going as well, because it's actually keeping me warm. Because um, I, I got up a minute ago and I had to wander around, and um, there's ice forming on everything around me, so it's pretty cold. Anyway, <laughs> that, honestly, that was rubbish. It's dinner time. It's been. <laughs> it's been quite hard work tonight. I've honestly struggled. Oh dear. I've been like, you know, like, I, I'd get this like laughing insane thing going on where um, when nothing's working for you and you just like, you have to laugh and you're just like, oh my god. Um, so it's been a bit like that. So I've just been laughing at stuff. Um, but I've got my fire going now. Bit of heat. I need this because it's um, under freezing now. Um, <laughs> oh dear fuck eh? I don't even know anymore. It's a funny old world isn't it? It's a funny life. It is. There's something though just amazing about having a fire. I won't plan on having a fire tonight but obviously I struggled with that bio light because the uh, battery died. Um. So, I just feel like 
you go back to that primitive sort of uh, lifestyle of just fire is like your main bit of hope and uh, it's just exciting I love it I just love it so getting a f fire lit I, I'll say I wasn't expecting it so I just feel I miss the smell of it you know I have one at home quite a lot but just being out in the woods and just just gathering some wood and getting it on that fire it's fantastic absolutely fantastic I love it so yep so it might have been a bit of a chore tonight but um it's been it's been quite pleasurable really I'm, quite, <laughs> I'm a happy man I am a happy man <laughs> I've got dog here just watching everything he's worth yeah blue <laughs> I ran 28 kilometers earlier today uh, which is quite a long way for me I'm you know generally I'm pretty good at running up to about 10k fast but after that I definitely start struggling um, and my legs are aching a bit from that because I've not run for a while because I've been injured uh, and it was trail running which is what I prefer being off-road but um, I was uh, supporting the uh, missus really because uh, honestly she's she is an absolute leg end totally she um she set herself a, a challenge for this month and it's february so um it's the shortest month been 28 days um and to run the date so she's run whatever the date is she's run that in kilometers every single day so this last week she's been um you know from 22 kilometers 23 24 25 26 27 and now 28 today um you know it's like three it's four marathons i think in a week she's just unbelievable i could not honestly i don't think i could do that i really don't um and she just keeps going she's just a proper diesel engine just steady where can just do it so absolute total respect for that girl she's awesome she's absolutely awesome so um yeah someone to look up to really and you know I, I feel that she she gives me a lot of drive and um you know to say i'm a very driven person anyway i just you know she's she's quite an inspiration she really is um and i definitely look up to her she's a good girl she is so yep total respect total total respect as i'm sure anyone out there would appreciate that is a hell of a lot of running and to do that there's can't be many people in the world that have ever done that um especially you know she's not like a pro athlete or anything so total brilliant absolutely brilliant anyway time to get myself to bed <laughs> I've had a good night. It's been awesome, really. Um, fire, just, oh, I love having a fire. Totally chilled out, warmed myself up. My toes are a bit chilly still, actually, now. Um, but once I get in that sleeping bag, I'll be uh, I'll be happy then. So, anyway. Time to rest these old bones. All on me arms. Good morning, flowers. Well, that was a pretty good night's sleep, to be fair. Um, I woke up early. I woke up at half five and um, looked outside and it's just really misty. There was no airflow air at all in the night, so I, um, I actually got well hot in my sleeping bag. Um, and obviously inside this tent, being a single skin tent, it's just absolutely wet through and there's not much space in it anyway. Uh, yeah, dog slept outside because this tent doesn't have enough to fit the dog in, which is, it's all right for summer camping and everything. And um, my dog, uh, Little Bluey, he sleeps on a mat that I've made and this mat um, 
it's an old uh, Gore-Tex bivy bag for um, an army bivy bag. So what I did was I cut cut the uh, two sections of it, it made us like a oblong, and then I got one of the um, so one of these foil blankets, which um, lay down. I put eight layers um, folded over of this and then stitched it all into uh, his sleeping mat so he's got a lot of uh, reflective insulation passing his heat back to him um, so he's totally fine um, sleeping outside um, let's have a look <laughs> yep he's got a comfort rating of minus four extreme is probably about is minus ten so he's fine he is he's actually quite good to have uh, when you're sleeping out as well because um, in the past he sleeps under my hammock and he's uh, growled and as soon as he's growled just a really low level growl I never really hear it and um, I, I look outside and there's like a deer walking past so he's actually uh, he's, uh, he's pretty good for that you get to see a bit extra just because of his eyes and ears yeah it's a uh, horribly grey day it's like just mist everywhere so the view that you'd normally have from this point um, is non-existent that is it so you can't see far at all so anyway I'll have to uh, try sort all this stuff out it's damp everything's damp um, that single skin tent this time of year it's not the best to use to be honest um, summer lightweight backpacking I think it'd be all right but um, it's just it's wet inside so it's not so good especially when there's no airflow and it's misty <laughs> it's like worst case scenario really so anyway hi well I'll get off geez I've got a face like a screwed up paper bag that's not so good is it I think I need to get some uh, a cup of tea down me a bit of rehydration <laughs> right get on Homeward bound. It's time to dry out all my kit. It's soaking. Ah, leave no trace. I can't leave my camera either. <laughs> Let's pick you up and we're off. Let's have a look at the tarn. Dog's thirsty. <laughs> oh yeah, it's pretty eerie that, look at that. <laughs> No swim today though, although that would look pretty nice. Things to do. Good night out that. I uh, felt my legs though coming down that hill. I um, After running 28k yesterday, definitely. So anyway, I'll definitely... Uh, whoa! Oh yeah, trekking poles. <laughs> oh dear. Don't normally have them, you see. Uh, anyway, it's been all right. I hope you've enjoyed just a, a little bit of a brief look at my local woods. Um, Eddie McGee's training ground. Anyway, take care of yourselves, and I will. Uh, Catch you on the next adventure, wherever that might be. Bluey Dog would say goodbye, but he's just, he's gone. So I'll just show you quickly a couple of the um, bits that I sort of use um, when I'm out doing a bit of bushcrafting. I generally 
often carry a knife anyway, but um, obviously things like Lapland saw, everyone's got one of these. Um, but yeah, I actually made the sheath. So this is like a leather sheath made from a, an old saddle, um, which is just a project, you know, just have a go and see how you can do it yourself. And it's easy enough to do. Um, bit of work, but that, it fits like I love that. Beautiful. So that's one thing. Um, and this is a knife that I've been using. I've got a couple of these actually that I've made. Um, but this one is this is my favourite one. Um, just a piece of um, old oak that I used, and I did uh, green liners on it. Which looks cool. Uh, it takes a bit of work doing a, a knife because obviously you've got to get the absolutely perfect um, symmetry on it and everything. This one's got a um, hangman's noose. It's quite a good knot to do actually, and then uh, it just allows you to have that little bit of extra just on it to hold it just in case. Um, but anyway. I love that knife and the sheath that is the coolest sheath look at that I made that so all this stitching detail all the way down here um, I've beeswaxed in and obviously polished up but it, it, it is quite a beautiful thing that because it looks battered and old straight away um, and fits in beautifully and then the other one is my axe so this is one, it's not often you can get an axe to actually fit on your belt. Um, this one is just a wetlands axe, um, which is beautiful axe, it's really, really nice. Um, but I'll just show you what I've made here to actually make it sit on my belt. So it sits upright, so you've got it to hand, you can obviously move it around. And all I've done is, simple, little click up, it flicks out. Back in and clip. So it's great because it's just on your belt, it doesn't stick out too far, and it's just there ready for you anytime you need it. And obviously, you can move it around if you want. Um, but yeah, there we go. Simple click and out. And the very nice axis is basic three things all you need for bushcraft. Yeah, then I've got my BioLite stove lit, and it sounds like a bloody rocket with this microphone. It picks up absolutely everything. Birds sound like bloody dinosaurs in the background. Anyway, there she is. Well, the boil time on that was probably no more than two minutes, and there's quite a lot of water in there. So it's definitely faster and hotter than. Uh, any sort of stove you'd buy, any gas stove. Um, take that off. And I'll just slow it down one. There we go. And it gives you enough to sit by a fire without ruining the ground at all. Pop a little bit more in. You can actually use this USB port to charge your phone up or use a light on it. This is actually another light that comes with, or you can buy this. It's a USB light. You can plug that in and you can have that on your camera so you actually can see what you're doing in the dark, which is quite cool. Um, but there we have it the BioLite stove. <laughs>